hi everyone, it's Hanov. I want to share that if, uh, if you don't have objects with you, this is a great time to go and gather some objects and have like a, a nice basket full of, uh, full of junk, just as Jonathan has. Jonathan wants to show us your... Great. <laughs> So once again, we want to welcome everybody who's now into our program. There's still people coming in from the waiting room. We'll get started in just about a minute and we'll can obviously continue to let people uh, in from the waiting room as that happens. We're so thrilled to be joined by Hanoch Piven who will get started in just a couple minutes. I, th I think now is as good of a time as any to get going. So I'm gonna begin the program and then I'll turn it over to Hanoch. Um, once again, my name is Dan Gold. I serve as the Vice President of Israel Education here at the, at the Los Angeles Jewish Federation. I'm so excited to welcome all of you to our exciting program. And I just want to give a brief intro and some background to both our organization and uh, the workshop today. The Jewish Federation of Greater Los Angeles identifies and addresses the greatest challenges, needs, and opportunities facing our community both locally and globally. The COVID-19 pandemic brought us waves of new challenges and critical needs. In response, we pivoted quickly and dramatically expanded our work, responding to our already and newly at risk vulnerable populations in Los Angeles and in Israel. We amended our program plan quickly so that we could respond in the most strategic manner possible, working intensively with our network of partners. We launched new programs to provide food to those in need and increased our care and services for seniors. To address the overwhelming number of requests for emergency funding for help from those who never previously asked, we expanded our financial assistance programs and established a new program providing interest-free emergency educational and business loans for families coping with dire financial circumstances and Jewish-owned Jewish -owned businesses face, facing closures. We also increased the number of Ezra network social workers to meet the escalating need for crisis assistance and increase the counseling available to combat the devastating mental health toll across our community from teens to young adults to the newly vulnerable. Sadly, while some of us made it through 2020 and into 2021 relatively unscathed, the extensive needs of our Jewish community have not disappeared in 2021. In fact, we are hearing from more community members and are seeing new needs emerge. We expect that the impact of the pandemic will be felt for a long time. As we look ahead to meeting the challenges of what this year brings, we will continue to rely on our community members to be ambassadors for our Federation and to lead by example through their generous support. Throughout 2020, we worked to keep our community involved in Jewish life. We offered extensive virtual programs for young adults and families with young children, and we created virtual Israel trip experiences like our program today to keep our community connected to our homeland. In fact, today's program is among a series of virtual Israel trip programs this spring that follow our whole lineup of incredible tours and conversations from the summer. The recordings of all past programs, as well as the registration for upcoming experiences can be found on our website, which we will put in the chat, but you can also just go to www.jewishla.org slash virtual dash Israel. Specifically, I wanted to call your attention to our incredible program coming up this Sunday night at 8 p.m. Our Federation, along with our partner in Israel, the Israeli Trauma Coalition, is putting on a concert honoring and celebrating Israel for Yom HaZikaron and Yom Atzmut. We are thrilled that one of Israel's most popular emerging singing stars, Raviv Kanner, will be performing and sharing his own story of serving in the IDF. We will also be joined by active IDF soldiers to commemorate the night. We will put that specific registration link in the chat as, as well, and we hope that you can join. It's really a can't miss experience. I also wanna thank our partners in putting all of our virtual Israel trip experiences together, both World Express Travel, we have Orit and Tamar from their office here in LA on the Zoom with us this morning. So thank you to Orit Tamar and everybody at World Express Travel, as well as IGT Tour Company in Israel. I think we have Ezra from IGT on, our, on the program today. We wanna to thank both of them for helping make all of our programs possible. Today's program is about reflecting on the past year, thinking about our own experiences and the heroic work of many through the lens of art and Israeli culture. We are honored to be joined by the renowned Israeli pop artist, Hanoch Piven, who will lead our interactive and introspective workshop. 
Hanoch is an award-winning illustrator, educator, and seasoned creative instigator. His artwork reinvents the meaning and use of everyday objects to create associations between the objects and the subject of his creation. Since the early 90s, Piven's work has been published in newspapers and magazines across the world, such as Time, Newsweek, Rolling Stone, London Times, Der Spiegel, Haaretz, and many more. He is the author of a series of award-winning children's books and apps, TV shows, and interactive exhibitions and advertising campaigns. He lectures extensively about, creati about creativity and its application to life in such forms as the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard, Business School, Duke University, the School of Visual Arts, and of course, many others. For the last 15 years, Hanok has been conducting creative workshops where participants use his method to explore and visualize their understanding of their values, vision, and emotions. He is also a Seeds of Peace Fellow, where he applies his art method to foster interchange and dialogue between Arabs and Jews. We want to remember and honor the frontline workers that stepped up so bravely and selflessly this past year. And we are working with Cedar sinai Medical Center here in Los Angeles and Hanok to have his art relative to this workshop displayed at the hospital, as well as full-time placement at the Jewish Federation building. Please share with me. I'll enter my email to the chat and Hanok is gonna share a link to share work that you make today, or maybe if you watch this video after and create a new work, so it can be included in that display along with Hanok's work. As you see today, our program is being run as a meeting, not a webinar, which means everyone's faces can be seen if you choose. And Hanok will be able to work with each of us in a friendly group setting. Of course, you can keep your video off if you prefer, but please keep yourself on mute if you are not interacting directly with Hanok and utilize the chat function or the hand raise emoji to ask any questions along the way. Currently, we have a mute on for everybody. We'll remove that once Hanok is done with his introduction. The program is being recorded and we will post it on our website shortly after the conclusion of this program. So with that long intro, I thank you again for joining and I'll now turn it over to Hanok. Thank you, thank you, Dan, so much. And um, hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you. And um, basically, um, we are going to spend the next hour together. I am strongly encouraging you all to turn on your cameras. This is a visual workshop. Very soon, I'm going to ask you actually to show your working area. So this is really a type of workshop that we want to see each other's working area. So um, I will start with a, with a short presentation. Um, it'll take not, not more than 10 minutes. It'll hopefully inspire you to want to create. This is a very easy to create, to do method of, um, of art making. Anybody can do it. So if you're here and you feel like you don't know how to draw, the last time you drew a horse, it looked like a car. So don't worry about it. Um, this is, uh, there is no need to know how to draw or paint. All what you need to have here is uh, willingness to play together and to talk a little bit about yourself through the art. So um, I'm going to share my screen with your um, permission. And um, we're going to be talking about what we are made of. And we're going to be talking through objects. Art is a means of communication. And um, the objects are going to be our words today. Are the slides moving? You, you see the objects now in front of you? Great. So I've been doing this for many, many years, for over 30 years, creating faces of famous people, creating books for children, both in Hebrew and in English, and creating the people that are sort of uh, our common history of the Jewish people, like David, David Ben-Gurion, the first prime minister of Israel, Golda Meir, the only woman who was prime minister of Israel. And of course, I had the chance to create many American presidents from Abraham Lincoln to Donald Trump, of course. Now, you can see that the objects communicate. I'm sure you get a message from the banana peel and from the baloney that I used to, um, to depict, to create Donald Trump. 
So this is the beauty of objects. Objects communicate. And as I said, we are going to be communicating today through the objects. This uh, portrait of Joe Biden was in Yediot Ahonot, the Israeli biggest newspaper, the week of the election. What's interesting about the objects, though, is that they communicate in different ways. There are objects like the eyes here of Barack Obama or the eyebrows that they're very clear why they are there. But there are objects like the nose of Obama, for example, that open a space. Each person might have a different uh, interpretation of why that object is there. And this is the beauty of art. And this is the beauty of this type of workshop. Each one of us can think for themselves, can feel free to come up with your own interpretation of what a specific object means to you. This is a very playful way of creating. It is like uh, playing with your food. And when we play, we, we are more creative. As a matter of fact, art is like a game. It is a protected space in which we can take chances. We can try things. We can make mistakes. Sometimes we win. Sometimes we lose. It is a, a place that um, protects us from what's happening in the real world. So I invite you to be playful today, just as you can play with your food. I'm sure you'll be able to play with objects. We're going to be making a collage. And a collage is a technique in which we mix objects, we mix uh, factors until we create something new, a new whole. And in a way, collage is a beautiful metaphor for each one of us, for our identity. Each one of us um, throughout our life, especially those, those of us who have moved from country to country, or for, or, um, for example, I was born in Uruguay. I made Aliyah to Israel in my, when I was uh, 11 years old. I studied in New York. I lived part-time in Israel and part-time in Spain. So each one of us has a story that uh, composes from many different experiences, places. Um, and uh, this is why collage is a wonderful medium to think about ourselves, about what we are made of. And of course, it is a wonderful metaphor for the family and uh, for any community. Any community is a collage and any, um, and any little family is a collage as well. But the collage method has something to teach us because the way in which we will be working today is, um, has several, I would say, teachings that we can distill from it and apply to our lives. First of all, what we will do today is the opposite of IKEA. There is no set of clear instructions that we need to follow. It is the opposite of driving with a GPS. Again, a, there is no big authority that will tell us what's right and what's wrong. It is not as driving on one of those endless highways that you have in LA and everything is very clear. But what we will do today is more like traveling on a scenic route. When we choose to travel on a scenic route, we want to discover, we open our eyes, we are influenced by what we find. We are in constant dialogue with what's around us. So this is the type of attitude I would invite you, I will invite you to have today. When we are on a scenic route, we pay attention, we see. And to see many times is to forget the name, to forget the preconception of whatever we are looking at. What Paul Valéry, the French poet that said that means is that when we are not, when we not, when we don't rush to name something, to label something, when we are a little bit confused, this is the time when we perceive better, when we are more attuned. And, uh, and of course, it's very difficult to forget a name. It's very difficult not to know a definition of something. We are afraid of not knowing. Our brain is mostly afraid of being confused. And this is why we need to make a trick to our brain 
to enter a space in which we won't be afraid to be confused and we will start to see things in a new way. And this is why where art comes, where play comes, it enters us, it helps us enter a new place. For example, what happens when we discover faces, we are actually seeing something new in the world and we are discovering the faces even before we name what we are seeing. So what we will do today is kind of the same idea. We will be looking at objects and thinking what ideas they give us. We will forget the name for a second and think, well, this looks like eyes, this looks like a nose. We will discover something new. And actually a box of matches like this gave me the idea to start making pictures this way. I was born in Uruguay in South America. This is me in the Jewish kindergarten in Montevideo. And as a kid, there is proof that I drew just like everybody else. I, we made Aliyah when I was 11 and in the 70s, I liked to copy the cartoons that I saw in the newspapers. But as I grew older, I drew less and less. And when I was in uh, art school in New York, I actually moved to New York because I was not accepted to Bezalel Art School in Jerusalem because I couldn't draw well enough. And this is me when I arrived to New York in the 80s. But um, when I started to draw cartoons again in art school, I saw that other people drew much better than me. I felt very confused. I felt very stuck. And um, this is uh, where being stuck helped me discover something new. And this is something that we can all, um, we can all identify with this feeling of being stuck and discovering something new as it has happened for us in this past year. Well, I started to see different possibilities of how to make faces. And uh, one day as I was making a portrait of Saddam Hussein, I saw a box of matches and I decided to use it as the mustache. It was a coincidence. I did not plan that, but it has, uh, it totally changed my way of creating faces. And basically I discovered my own way of creating faces. It was, uh, and, and since then I started to work in magazines and this has happened over 30 years ago. But I'm telling you all this story because many times we need to be stuck in order to find our own way of doing something. Only when we fail to be like others, we can learn to be like ourselves, individuals. And this, uh, this winding road of searching that I went through will, um, will happen every time that I try to create something. It happens every time that I try to create something and will happen to you as well. And the secret is to trust the process, to try things. As Steve Jobs said, we can connect the dots only when we look back at our road. It's difficult to know when, when we are in the middle of it, so the secret is to do something very simple, like try and error, to try many objects. I tried 30 or 40 eyes until I found the right ones for Albert Einstein. And when we try many things, we discover coincidences, like the mouth of Homer Simpson was the garbage can in my studio. And the last thing I want to say about the process is just to be flexible. Flexibility means that we don't rush to finish. Our piece of work will evolve constantly. And this is also what art can teach us about life, that we rarely succeed at the beginning. We need to make mistakes, sketches, in order to find something um, that works. So uh, after many years of working in newspapers in Israel, I worked in Aaretz for many years. Again, David Ben-Gurion, Sarah Netanyahu, the wife of uh, Bibi Netanyahu, the prime minister. This is a very, very old piece. After many years in which I worked in magazines and newspapers, I started to create books for children. And um, the book that I'm working on now 
uh, you will be one of the first ones that sees uh, pictures from it, is a book about biblical heroes. So you can see here uh, David and Goliath, and you can see here Ruth and Naomi, and, um, and Elijah the prophet. So this is part of my next book. The books for children brought children that started to send me art, art pieces. And this is actually how I got to start visiting schools and see how this way of working is used, can be used by anybody. As a matter of fact, artists, uh, teachers send me constantly art projects that they make using my, inspired by my work. This is actually a teacher, Sigalit Nehemia from LA sent me um, this series of uh, the work of her students that they created heroes using collage. This is Golda Meir. And um, I'm sure you can recognize Ruth Bader, Bader Ginsburg here. And this is uh, Ilan Ramon, the Israeli astronaut. But um, as uh, Dan said, in my work in Israel with Seeds of Peace, I've been doing lots of workshops in which Arabs and Jews work together. This is the bilingual school in Jerusalem where I, um, I have created um, a series of workshops with the families. And, um, and of course, the big surprise was to discover how adults can work in this way as well um, and not draw stick figures like usually adults might, uh, might do. It turns out that anybody likes to play, that everybody likes to play, and that everybody likes to talk about themselves. And this is a way for people to talk about themselves. A lot of the workshops are working together. So if you are to, together with your family, it is an opportunity to create a family picture today. Um, this is uh, actually uh, a workshop that we did in Kiev recently, uh, working with children in hospitals. And, um, and these are some of the works that uh, Arabs, Arab Israelis and Jewish, Jewish Israelis uh, make together in the Seeds of Peace uh, workshops, Israeli teenagers, Jewish and Arab working together, I find that the objects and the playing bring people together. And in the same way that we rethink about the name of the object and the purpose of the object, we might also rethink about the other, rethink about our environment and even rethink about ourselves. So um, before we get to work, I want to show you some family creations that we did in a, in a project in Israel in Beit HaTfutzot called Family Matters. We invited Israeli families to create, uh, what are they made of? A portrait of their family. And you can see that each family took it to a different uh, direction. Some families made one person, some families, uh, made a metaphor like, like this family made a river. Some families work made their pets, their dogs or cats. And um, we created, I created ahead of time, three pixelized pictures. This one with Moses and this one with David Ben-Gurion reading the Declaration of Independence. And this one is a kid flying in the air and it, it was based on a picture from Uruguay of my father and my cousin. So we created a mural. The idea was to create a mural at 12 meters by three meters long, by three meters tall mural in which each pixel will be a creation of one family. And indeed, each one of the creations was photographed and printed and we indexed it and slowly we put together all the pictures on the wall. And after 3000 families visited, Beit HaTfutzot, we created this final image. And this is in a way for me, an example of community artwork. It is basically my work, but it is also the work of each one of the 3000 families that uh, told something about themselves individually 
and we tell something as the community and everybody feels a part of it. Those are my parents who made also one square there. So uh, this is pretty much the introduction. I'm sorry if I talk too much. Um, and I hope you are um, willing to play with objects. I encourage you again to trust the process. I think that uh, for a good reason, one of the pri primar, primal ethos of uh, stories of the Jewish people is about a long journey uh, of discovery. So um, what I will like you to create is a symbolic self-portrait with the objects you have around. And uh, it is important to see, to say that it doesn't need to look like you. It's not about creating a likeness. It needs to tell something about you through the objects. Not every object needs to symbolize something. Some objects might be there because you enjoy seeing them or they help you visually. While you are working on your portrait, think perhaps about two objects that maybe help you tell a story about this past year. As Dan said, we can reflect upon this past year. Maybe one object will define a strength, a value, something that you are proud of in how you have dealt and are dealing with this uh, period, this pandemic period. And maybe the second object is a challenge that you have been facing this, uh, this year. So um, this is the end of um, me sharing. And uh, hi, everybody. I see you all now. So you're invited, first of all, to open your cameras. And um, I'm going to let you also unmute yourself. Um, and what I would like to encourage you now, as we start working, is to show us your working area. And basically start putting all the objects next to your working area and see what kind of uh, faces you start making. You can start with something very, very, very simple just a simple face, and then slowly start trying different possibilities. Try, start doing what we call trial and error, which basically means trying different uh, possibilities. You might hear in the background the muazin because I live in Jaffa and I live across from the muazin. So, um, you might use, you might want to use uh, some color paper, which will help you uh, define the face. You don't have to, you can define the face in any other way. And uh, try possibilities. Maybe at certain point, um, you will discover the joy of creating facial expressions. Basically, any object that you put will create a facial expression, will create emotion. And also you might start to see objects that have meaning to you. Maybe um, some quality that you have, maybe something um, that tells something about your family. Don't rush to decide, play and try things. Okay, so. Jonathan, I, you get the prize for being the first person that is showing us your, your um, area. And Daniel also wonderful. And Naomi, Naomi, wonderful. And Julie, wonderful Julie. Great stuff there. So. Can you hear the muazin? Okay, Judy is already advanced there. Now, I want to encourage you to share with us some of the 
one or two of the objects that you chose to talk about maybe your strength or a challenge that you are going through. So anybody would like to share something with us? Judy. Okay, well, Judy, please. Um, during COVID, I had a breakup with someone that I was with for six years. And so I've had two little hearts that are broken with tears coming out of them. But on the other hand, I had a happy birthday. So I have that at the top and I have a little bit of wine that I drank and I have to add some more things. And this is me with my blonde hair. And uh, I guess I have a smile on my face. Yeah. Judy, did you just make it now or you made yes, it earlier? I just I actually made it while you were talking. Okay. Because... <laughs> I was Wonderful. listening and watching, but at the same time, I, I you know, I, I have these emotions that are mixed, you know, the sadness. And then on this right hand side, I have to do some happiness. Lovely. Thank you, Judy. I appreciate you. very much that you started uh, sharing with us. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate Na you being online today. Yeah. And Judy, I encourage you to keep working on it to change oh. it a little bit not rushing to glue so it changes um it takes time so appreciate the time that it takes you can do another one if you want thank you i'm going to fix the lips good can you talk about what kind of glue you use to put these things on sure usually i use hot glue gun if you have a hot glue gun it could be wonderful and if not just um, any type of, uh, of glue, um, Elmer's glue. But you know what? One of the things that happens here is that you, we don't even need to glue. As long as we take a picture from above at the end, um, we don't really need to, uh, to glue anything. But uh, you can glue, if you have a hot glue gun, that is the, the, the most wonderful tool to use. I love that idea of just taking a picture. Yes, and actually I'm, uh, I'm putting now on the chat the link to the Padlet. I open the Padlet. If you click on that link, you don't need to do it now. Um, you will see that I already uploaded a portrait there. So, um, so you can do it also. Let's hear somebody um, telling us Danielle, yes, uh, about the objects that you chose. You don't have to show us the portrait yet um, because it takes time, but um, of course, if you want, but I encourage you more to concentrate now on one or two objects. Yes, Danielle, Danielle, Dan Danielle, sorry. Uh, you're muted. How about now? Yes. Hi, perfect. nice to meet you and thank you for doing this. And I will say that last night when I was thinking about objects, I was thinking, I don't know, I can't think of anything and feeling kind of discouraged about it until I found the first one that made me happy to, to find. And it's a little mini, it's a little mini whisk. Um, and cause I love to cook. And that's something that I did a lot when all three kids were home during much of the pandemic. And I do always. And uh, so then once I found that, I started seeing a lot of other things that made me excited to do this. So um, I'm happy to be doing it. And I, I'm actually, uh, uh, I think it's really, I'm excited and inspired to be doing this little portrait of me because I've actually been working on portraits of other family members instead, which I choose and like, but I'm like, hey, this is me. <laughs> totally. It's time for you to be, right. to be with yourself. Yeah. And I, I also want to add that um, I see, for example, I'm looking at Jonathan, how your portrait keeps changing. And I encourage you guys to take pictures of your work in the process. That will allow you to, um, to, keep, uh, to keep some kind of record of what's happening. And if you like more something that happened before you will be able to go back to it, okay? So um, you're also welcome to upload um, 
pictures of the process to the Padlet. One more thing I want to add is that if somebody wants to share an object with us through the chat by writing it, you are very encouraged, you're very welcome to do it. Of course, we would also like to hear you share something with us. Thank you, Daniel. We, Daniel, we will come back to you. Who else uh, would like to share something? No, Nomi. Hi, Nomi. Uh, unmute yourself. There you go. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for having me there with you guys. This is a beautiful opportunity. I'm sure many people have already realized that as teachers, we accumulate a lot of things. As you can see here, this is what I kept. Um, but you can have an idea of the many things that I've collected. I can't throw them away. Everything means something to me. So I have here a work I did about 10 years ago when my dog passed away. And it incorporates a lot of things that you talked about. So I kind of related to what you just gave us as an intro. So that's Sandy. This is her leash. This is one of the bones, the play bones she had. This is some of her food. Those are the places we visited with her. And a lot more stories there, but you can have an idea. So that's how <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I created that. I like so are, you going, are you going to make a portrait of your dog? Um, you know what? I did. I did. A I did. Um, I did a portrait of her right here. You can see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's me with her. That's her. And then I, I kind of started working around it without knowing what's going to happen. I just pulled all the things that I, I still had of her. And one day I just sat down and did that. So that was a long time ago. But when I heard about you, I said, wow, that means something. It's like, um, it's Thank like, you. It's an art. <laughs> we call it yeah. an art, actually. Because my husband looked at it and said, oh, okay. You know, and everybody was kind of, all right. So, Nomi, what are you making now? What are you making on, in front of I don't of you? know. You said faces. Okay. I can't draw okay. really well. So no, no, I you don't need to draw. You, you have some color paper next to you. So you might want to use the color paper to define. Uh, to the left, I saw you have some yellow there. So you might. Uh, cut some of the paper exactly some to define a bit of a face but think about something that you want to tell about yourself okay nomi oh you're muted so um we we will i guess you muted yourself okay there you are i said that this actually uh you inspired me to start this so as you're talking i am doing this uh this work now and I have a lot of little boxes here that are dental uh, wax, which mm -hmm. I uh, used with the kids to do all kind of little projects, like the Torah, all the Torah is in it. When you open it, it pops up. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. on Purim, we did like... Okay. So, no, so keep, I took keep, keep trying, keep trying okay. things. <laughs> try, to tell, try, to, try to tell your story now by creating something and we'll come back to you, okay? Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nomi. <laughs> so uh, I invite um, who else would like to share something with us? Um, let's see. Um, is Adi there? Once you are, are you wanting to share something with us, Adi? Hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. I don't know if I have something to share. I'm still working on it. No, you don't have, Adi, you don't have to share us a portrait yet because I don't want to rush you into finishing, but just maybe something that you want to say about yourself through an object, an object that means something to you, that has meant something to you. I don't know. I just have to say I'm having really fun. <laughs> I'm just enjoying. I'm running okay. all over the house and I'm trying to find objects. And that's a wonderful comment yeah that, so i'm just amazing. enjoying just exploring 
yes, lovely. So keep doing it. And maybe once you have an object that means something about you, that wants to, that you can tell something about you, uh, maybe you can write it or raise your hand and come back to you. Thank you. So that, thank you. Okay, so um, anybody would like to share an object or, um, I mean, it can be an object that really tells a bit where you are now, um, emotionally or, you know, um, after one year of going through the pandemic. Uh, Sharon Krishner, would you like to share something with us? There you are. I, have, I am visiting my grandchildren in Chicago for the first time since February of last year. So we are oh. having a very sweet time. Yes. Lovely. With, a, with a lollipop. The C's lollipop from California. Show them Okay. Yeah, show them Say hello. Hi. Hi, hi. So you're working with grandmother? Yeah. Look at Lovely. This is your portrait, right? She's working on it. Yeah, I need to glue it. Okay. All right. Could you help? Yeah, I will help you. Okay, so we'll come back to see your gluing. Uh, that, that's you, Clara, right? Yes, that's Clara. Okay, and your brother, Clara? George. George. Maybe George can work as well. Maybe. We'll okay. see. Okay. Thank you, guys. Like Thank you. We're going to mute ourselves. Let's see. All right. Okay. Um, who would like to share? Uh, let's see. Who is this? Um, Jonathan, would you like to share something with us? I want to tell you guys that Jonathan has been ready with his objects for a long, long, long time. Uh, you're still muted. There you are. There we go. So <clears throat> I've been trying to actually, I was going to try to add even some of these stones in here um, because uh, first of all, this is uh, a try to be a brain, which has been both a challenge and a strength during this time at various times, um, and maybe a puzzle that sometimes fits, sometimes doesn't. Um, we have a house, uh, my family in Vermont, that's been in the family about 100 years, and we have not been able to go now for two years. Um, and these are stones from that stream there. Mm. Uh, every time we go, I take a stone and bring it back. So um, nice. it's, it's a way of reminding me of that. Um, and um, I was trying to find a way of making a house because our family has been very strong together at home, the four of us. So, You know, Jonathan, one thing to do with those stones, you can use them as the, um, you are using them as eyes but you can use them as the, the white of the eye, the eyeballs, and then put a pupil on them. Just for example, if you see what I've done, once we put a pupil, um, it creates a lot of focus to the eyes and, and then we can, we can create really um, emotion by moving, by moving the, the eyes, it creates more engagement. So, there you go. I mean, now they function as eyebrows, but if you put that button on top of the stone, so, um, it, it, yeah, like even if you put one on top, there you go. There, there you go. It won't um, stay. So. Yeah, okay. All right. So you can, what you did now is also, they, they, now they function as eyelids. Oh, they function as eyelids. They function as uh, eyebrows. Um, again, it will help creating more emotion. Lovely. So keep going. Um, I love how Jonathan. I love how many tries you are you are doing. Well, it's fun. It's fun. 
I yeah. think it's, it's fun to play. Definitely. Um, let's see. Somebody that hasn't talked, I don't know, uh, Ofra, Eva, um, Julie, you guys are invited to join if you feel like. I don't want to put anybody on the spot. If you feel like sharing something with us. Meantime, we see that Adi is exploring further on. And also Danielle is uh, advancing. Can I ask a question? Sure, of course. I'm yeah, trying, I, I'm trying to find ahead. something that can fit for a mouth. Okay. <laughs> you have maybe ideas that can help me. I want to do like a, I, I want to have a smile. Okay. So Adi, let me show you my working area. Maybe that will uh, help you. Okay. Um, see, when I, the, the big secret is trial and error. What does it mean that I don't know how an object will look until I try it? Only when I try it, I see what expression happens and, um, and, and what it means. And, and according to that, I, I react. You know, I might think that this could work because it's a smile, but then it looks too big, maybe. Um, so basically, what I'm saying is try, try possibilities. Out of 10 objects, you might find one that will be the one that will, um, that will give you the best, uh, the best solution. Mm -hmm. so, um, so try, it's hard to know ahead, ahead of time. Yeah. It's a question of trying many possibilities. And um, you know, if you're lucky, you will find something that also has meaning to you, but don't think that every object must have a lot of meaning. Yeah, got it. it seems like you're having fun there, so continue with, uh, with that. Yeah, I will, thank you. <laughs> and of course, anybody that wants to um, ask me questions, uh, I spoke before and spoke, but uh, you guys are very welcome to, to ask questions. Julie, shall we visit with you? Would you like uh, to tell us something about what you're doing? Well, I um, I added some things, but they're falling off. I wanted oh, to add. Yes, go I, ahead. I live, near, I live near the beach, so I added some seashells at the bottom. And this nice. is my beach. It doesn't look like the beach. Yeah, yeah, no, it uh, it looks like a beach towel or something like that. It it feels like uh, my life, even though this side of my life might not And then uh, this I found where I walk, and I couldn't glue this. I'm trying to glue this. It's not so easy. But I thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to do this. A pleasure. Um, I have fine. something that I can show you. Sure. Hold on one second. Let me spotlight you. Um, this is uh, Ofra. Yeah. Hi, Ofra. Very simple, but mm -hmm. it's the idea. Oh, it's moving. I don't know. It doesn't doesn't work well. What I have here, as you can tell, a mask. Yeah. This uh, those are the hair. The gloves, yes. Yes, the eyes and the nose. What are the eyes made of, Ofra? Box. Okay. And this is a stamp. Okay. 
It's very simple, but it's the idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, uh, it's very and it's, current because of the mask and the gloves. Right, right, right. <laughs> Thank and, you. And, and does the, do the eyes mean something? Is there anything you wanted to say? To one is brother? open and one is closed. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's fun. I wanted to say something about the seashells that I put here. They were given to me by my little granddaughter when we went down to the beach after I was completely vaccinated in two weeks. And it was like freedom at last. Right, so, right, right. Yeah, so the beach symbolizes freedom for you. That's, yes, uh, freedom that's and, and peace. I, I, that's where I go. I walk on, um, there's a pier there, and I don't care if there's people, I walk and, and I feel peaceful. Right, right. I have to say that um, I want to share with you all that um, creating art has been extremely helpful for me in this past year. Not just creating art, but being with people that are creating, just as you are right now. I feel that um, in the darker times throughout this year, when there was no control over anything that was happening around us, and maybe we were limited on our freedom of movement, I felt that when we create, we are free we have power, we are sort of like the creators of the world. And I think that um, this is um, the type of benefit that art can bring at times like this, that it gives us a feeling of power. Hi, Nomi. Yeah, I just wanted to show you how I did my second uh, picture here with the story of Yom HaShoah and Israel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I, I can't stop thinking about it. Uh, mm -hmm. Today's Yom HaShoah, we can't right. just ignore it. So I've right. got black walls with stones that I actually got from Israel. Mm. I've got a mold that I often use on my cooking classes mm -hmm. on Israel. Mm -hmm. I got the fish. Uh, that is also, I do flower arrangements uh, with the kids. So I put things like that in the bottom of the vases. So I've got some uh, here and fish symbolizes, you know, it's a big uh, motive in uh, Jewish tradition. Right, then I right, got right. the sea, the sea right down in, um, you know, the sea, the Red Sea is right mm -hmm. here. Oh, the bottom parted, of the map. In two, parted in two, sort of. Yes, exactly. Oh my God, I didn't think about it. That's great. <laughs> yeah, those are the happy accidents. Yeah, and those are the yellow, I just cut them, uh, the yellow um, Jewish star that are yeah, now yeah. blue because yes. now we are, you know, we are celebrating continuation yeah. and, and, and survival and all that. So that's And Nomi, I want to encourage you to take two of those black stones and put them as pupils on the eyes, on, oh. the, on the stones. Um, like there you that. go. Oh see, my God. Now you create, see, now you create more engagement because you, you, yeah. there, is, there is a focus now that comes from, from the eyes. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hanoch, I have a question. Yes, uh, please. I, I know we're we're getting close to the end. We yes. have, we're a little bit short on time, but you know we can stick around and continue yeah, yeah, to see how this this continues. Uh, you know, these days there's a lot happening. This idea of cancel culture and it's coming. I think both sides of the when things get political. I'm curious if you ever hesitate to use an object to just when you're doing a okay, portrait. I, I, you ever I'm think sorry, about that? Culture. I, I cancel, that. cancel culture. This idea that something that you do could offend people so so badly that you'll nobody wants to you know nobody wants to look at use your art anymore nobody wants to use oh, uh I something see, like I see. so people will i see that you hesitate well, to use an object does that ever happen um that's especially especially when you're doing political uh right, political right, portraits. Right. um you know i assume um I, 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 you know, I feel that many times when you're a cartoonist and a caricaturist, 
you need to try to be oblivious to certain things and um but uh, but of course you know um I, I, I guess I don't have a I, I don't have an immediate answer and I don't feel like I've been um, censoring myself whenever I wanted to do something. You know, I showed you a portrait of Sarah Netanyahu, which is obviously a very old one, but um, you know, but I think humor allows you to say things. And I, I believe I'm a big believer in humor, and humor allows you to say things that maybe are difficult to say uh, in a straight face, in a straight talk. Um, makes sense. I hope that helps. Dan. Yeah, it makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so guys, um, let's do a one last round to see where you guys are. And then I will encourage you to take pictures of your piece from above and upload it to the Padlet. Um, so let's quickly look uh, at Daniel's work. Um, I'm going to spotlight some of you and uh, invite you. And Sharon, Krishner, and Clara, we, you are next uh, after, after uh, Daniel. Daniel, would you like to say something? Um, well, I'd like to say thank you very much because this was a lot of fun and sparked the creativity and community, and it's great. And I will just say, I, I like the surprise of it, that the, the discovery that, oh, <laughs> I didn't know this would work here and right. enjoy the, in, enjoying the meaning behind it, that I, I know what I'm seeing, you know, and like the little object, the little uh, jam at the top. I, I like thinking, well, I always have food on my mind. So <laughs> that, uh, that's what I get from looking at this. And um, I'm, I'm thrilled that we did it and I really, really appreciate the experience. Thank you so much. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Danielle. Thank you. And um, um, Sharon and Clara, you guys wanted to, um, to say Clara something. Had a question. Yeah, Clara had a question. What was your question, sweetie? Um, it wasn't really a question, but it was like, I saw the leaves and then I, I just looked good for the ears. Yeah, you, oh, you discovered a, a happy coincidence that you could use it for the ears. Yeah, and she put her hair clip in and her hair. And oh, it's on a piece of this. They can't see it, but some of the other sides. Okay. Lovely. Anyway, we had a we had a great time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, let's see who anybody that hasn't talked that would like to say something. Um, let's go back to Jonathan one second. Jonathan, is there anything that you would like to add? Yeah. Um, you got me thinking, and I was talking about. I told you about the stones, but um, there's four of us in the family, my wife and two daughters, and we've been very much together and actually enjoying spending all this time together. So I had these giant four paper clips in terms of us being together and, and trying mm. to make a smile. We also have a dog who is a part of the family. Um, uh, so and we look at him. He's a part of us a lot. And I was still trying to work on we also, I, I was trying to see if I could make this a nose because uh, this is a remote control because we have actually been watching uh, TV and movies and um, that's actually one of the things that has brought us close is that we do all that together. A lot of people wow. think that that is a separation, but for us, it was a together. Um, anyway, that's what I was trying to do here. So Wonderful. Thank you, Jonathan. So guys, thank you so much. Uh, Judy, do you want to say something last, a uh, last word, Judy? I see you okay, really want uh, to share something. <laughs> I have little glasses on there. I don't know if you can see them. We can see them, yes. I just found this in the, it was from a candy thing, something that divided candy. You just never know what you're gonna find. This has been so fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all for joining. We can see some of uh, the ones that, uh, Julie, you didn't talk, but you showed us your work. Thank you, Julie. 
and um, and Adi, we saw how uh, the, the mouth that you chose, we see the comb that you chose for the mouth. And uh, thank you all and Naomi's finished piece also, we are enjoying it. Uh, thank you very much for um, hosting me, uh, Dan and Orit and the people from uh, the Jewish Federation. I really hope that uh, one day we'll be able to meet again uh, visiting LA as I did many times before, or maybe in Israel when you guys visit uh, Israel. So um, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Dan, you are- Yeah, meeting? just- Yes, I think I'm are. up. Just want to say thank you to Hanok. Thank you for everybody to joining. Please, I will, for those of you still on, I will put my email in the chat, but Hanok put up his, uh, the link where you can share your work. You can keep working at it. Just because our video ends doesn't mean you have to stop. And uh, as soon as we get the recording of this online, we'll send it out to you and you can keep going through until you have something you like and share it with us. So thank you, everybody. Thank you to Hanok. Thank and, you. Uh, Thank you. Thought, Looking everyone. forward to see you in Israel and in LA. Yes, yes, definitely. Yes. Bye. Thank you. Bye.